subscribe now and press the bell icon. Never miss an update. Being young has its advantages and its disadvantages. Most of us are familiar with being told that we are too young for things or to wait until we are older or that because of our age we should not try to do and say certain things. Timothy probably felt this way too. This letter encourages Timothy, a young leader in the early church, and reminds him that he is not too young. This message can be a reminder for anyone who feels too young to serve as a leader. Do not let anyone look down on you because you are young. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 12 These words are very good to live by and following Timothy's example is a good practice to live by. Do you ever wonder where is God during those really difficult moments of decisions? Like when you are with some friends or someone proposes you all do something exciting but dangerous and you feel caught in the middle. Or when an entire group is taking advantage of a teacher who has left the room during the test. Or when a new kid trips and falls in the cafeteria and no one makes a move to help. One of the best places to look for a God's direction is that feeling in the center of your stomach. When you are faced with life's dilemmas. That feeling may be a sign of your conscience prompting you to act. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 19, Timothy is told to have faith and good conscience. A good conscience is based on a reason and love and is developed through the commitment to make a good and thoughtful moral decisions. Take time to develop your conscience by studying moral issues and the teachings of the Catholic Church. The more you develop your conscience, the more you will experience God speaking to you through those gut feelings. P, P, R, T are the initials of directions for prayer given in the first Timothy chapter 2 verse 1. The first P is prayers, which simply means taking time out to pray. The second P is for petitions. Petitions are your needs that you pray for. The R is for the request. Requests are other people's needs that you pray for. The T is for thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is taking time to thank God for the things you are grateful for. Praying out loud in front of a group can be a very difficult, especially if you have not had a time to practice. So, just remember, it is very easy to pray if you remember P, P, R, T. Give it a try right now. Prayers. Take a few minutes to pray. Petitions Pray for your own personal needs. Requests Pray for needs of other people and especially the things people asked you to pray for. Thanksgiving Thank God for the things people and events you are grateful for. A modern person reading the first Timothy chapter 2 verse 8 to 15 may be shocked by the teaching there. A passage like this can be easily misunderstood and even misused against women. It is very important to realize that it is a reflection of women's role in the ancient times. 
whatever her religious background jewish christian or pagan a woman's place was in the home women generally married young had no education and were not allowed to hold a position of public authority the earliest christian communities gathered in members houses in this less public arena women thought and performed other ministries as the christianity became more widely accepted concern for how the church appear to outsiders grew including concerning about the drunkard ministers immodest dress and women teaching in public that is probably why the author of the first timothy say i permit no women to teach chapter 2 verse 12 are things different for a woman in contemporary christianity yes society has changed today people in the world are not scandalized if a woman manages a business runs for a public office or leads a private foundations today if you ask people to name influential church leaders mother teresa almost always comes up think of other women you know who are involved in the church life in your own parish or community for example there are probably women who are religious education directors coordinators of youth ministry or pastoral ministry and on and on in bible the church leaders mentioned in the first timothy chapter 3 are called bishops the church helpers mentioned in the chapter 3 are called deacons first timothy was written when the churches that st paul and other missionaries started were getting bigger they needed strong spiritual leaders to stay on track this letter provided spiritual advice to those early bishops and deacons for leading their churches over time the holy spirit shaped the roles of bishops priests and deacons into the ministries that we have today the leaders of the early church helped maintain true teaching and guided the church services and so do our bishops priests and deacons today music ministers youth ministers and pastoral ministers serve as their leaders in the many parishes too are you called to serve the church in a leadership role Jesus son of god train me to be merciful extending my hands in forgiveness train me to be compassionate extending my heart to those in need train me to be generous extending my gifts and talents and resources to others train me to be courageous extending my voice to eliminate injustice train me to be committed to love stretching my faith to unlimited possibilities amen Timothy was a young leader in the church. Other people may not have given him the respect he deserved. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 12. The author of this letter reminds Timothy and us that any one of any age can be an example by their speech and conduct. Even though you are young you can be an inspiration for others even people much older than you we live in a culture that glorifies the material things money and consumptions 
people are generally thought to be successful if they have great riches and all the luxury items to prove it to their neighbors there is a bumper sticker that reads the one who dies with the most toys wins even when the individuals or families have essential things to live comfortably many are driven to acquire more an important truth found many places in the scripture see for example luke chapter 12 verse 20 is repeated here you cannot take it with you the scripture warns about something that most of us know deep down but often ignore the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil and in our eagerness to become financially rich we usually lose sight of god and become entangled in all kinds of senseless distractions first timothy chapter 6 verse 10 all of us need the basic stuff of life food clothing and shelter god wants us to have these things and more ultimately real riches and success will not be measured by our bank accounts or material things but by the love and generosity with which we have lived how rich are you becoming in these things examine yourself did you ever get into trouble for something you did not do it then you know how this writer feels imagine someone who was put in jail simply for being a christian this letter expresses the sadness of the church leader who has suffered for the faith yet the author still has faith still has persistence and still wants to encourage others especially the timothy to be strong it is clear that the author knows timothy's family is well that he loves and cares about timothy very much this letter ends with the author recording details about many personal friends imagine how lonely it would feel to sit in jail without any friends it seems to make this letter even more special willy is a popular guy in the senior class he is on the basketball and the track team and served on the student council he is extremely friendly and never say anything bad about anyone everyone likes him willy is also very active in his church activities and youth groups he is not afraid to let others know that the church is important to him he never preaches religion but he lets people know that church and jesus are central to his life the author of the second timothy encourages the readers do not be ashamed then of the testimony about our lord chapter 1 verse 8 you do not have to announce your faith from the mountain tops or from street corners but like willy you should not be afraid to admit that god is important to you you will likely discover that others admire you for your faith and commitment as a young person it is natural that you will feel deep emotions you will love more sometimes you may get angry about injustice and feel hurt more easily this is what it means to be passionate and it is a very good thing So what does second Timothy mean when it says avoid the passions of youth chapter 2 verse 22 
the author is talking about not letting your emotions take control of you don't let your love and your anger and your hurt lead you to say or do something that you will later regret when you are feeling strong emotions take a break share your feelings with god in prayer talk with someone a little older who can help you to sort out what you are feeling what to say what to not to say what to do and what to not to do or there certain bible stories you know really well maybe you know them because you have heard them all your life they are probably the stories your grandparents parents catechist and the priest told you as you grew up this is like a timothy who from an early age learned the scripture second timothy chapter 3 verse 14 to 15 The advantage you have is that this special episode of the Bible is created just for a young people. It is important to have parents and teachers teaching you about the Bible. And this Bible will also help you to understand the meaning of the Bible stories. The truth is that by reading and praying with the Bible you are getting to know God. God is revealed in the Bible and the more stories about God and the people of God you become familiar with the easier it is to know God God also reveals himself and his truths in sacred tradition Sacred tradition includes the truths revealed by Jesus Christ that were taught and passed on by the apostles the popes and the bishops Sacred tradition and the Bible are the ways God's revelation for all people is handed on. Sticking with something can be difficult. When things get tough, many people are tempted to quit or walk away. If swim practice is boring, they drop off the team. If personalities on the committee are difficult they drop out if marriage loses its spark they leave we are surrounded by the message like if we feel good do it and you should have whatever your heart's desires and life will be great if you wear this kind of clothes and drink this beverage or hang out with these people but reaching a worthy goal often requires a hard choices and hard work second timothy chapter 4 verse 1 to 5 warns us against being taken in by deceptive teaching and messages like a cultural teaching that life should be always be easy and pleasurable such teachings water down the real challenge of living as a follower of jesus christ If we are not finding life to be challenging maybe we have turned into this misleading messages This letter was probably written in the name of St Paul recalling the time when St Paul was in prison In prison St Paul was sad He missed Timothy and his other friends and begged them to visit him He was worried about how everyone was holding up but he had faith in the people of God. He sensed that he might not live much longer and he said about his life, I have done my best in the race. I have run the full distance and I have kept the faith. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 7. The writer knew that St Paul was ready to accept his death. and was grateful that he had had such a full life is there someone you know who has lived a long and full life perhaps an aging relative or a neighbor take a moment to be thankful for that person
pray for that person's needs then decide to spend a time with that person and enjoy the life with him or her maybe you can get some good advice for your life as timothy did do you ever want to give a advice to a bishop or a leader of the church this short letter does exactly that it was written to a church leader and it is filled with advice advice for elders and leaders and for rebellious people advice for men and women both young and old advice for church leaders on what to do and what to not to do there is even advice for slaves after reading this letter you might think about your answer to this question if i were a church leader what advice would i want to follow leadership is an awesome task a good leader knows how to motivate people to grow and to serve society church leaders in particular must earn to respect of others through the integrity of their lifestyle and their commitment to the values of jesus christ look at the qualifications for bishops that are given in titus chapter 1 verse 5 to 9 this makes a great checklist for any leader to use which leaders in your school program do you admire the most what qualities make them good leader how do these leaders stack up against the list in verse 5 to 9 how do you check yourself the letter to titus is a very short and was written to a church leader who did not become very famous and yet a passage from this letter chapter 2 verse 11 to 14 is used every year at christmas midnight mass four little verses that are read at mass begin with beloved the grace of god has appeared saving all and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires The Christmas story itself has explains of God making big things from small beginnings. Mother Mary is just a young girl, a teenager, and she becomes the mother of God. Bethlehem is tiny town, not very well known for anything, and it becomes the birthplace of our savior Messiah. God is very good at making surprising things happen. So don't you ever doubt the importance of whatever you do for God. Even if you think it is small, God can make very big things come from it.